Hey folks, it's Ben Deckroy here from Alt Zero. Join me for the next 20 minutes or so, and we're going to take the Express Node.js app that we wrote in the first two episodes, and we're going to add some route-specific authentication. And we're also going to create a separate Express API with public and private routes. It's a slightly longer video than usual, so feel free to use the time codes below to jump to the part that's more specific to you. Otherwise, feel free to watch the whole show, and I'll look forward to you joining me. Let's get into it. In the first two episodes of this series, we created a Node.js Express web application. We added uh, EJS as a templating mechanism and added Auth0 for authentication so that we could log in and get a page similar to this one where we can see the profile picture and the name of the person who's logged in. If you want to revisit those or you miss out on those, click on the link up in the top right hand corner and have a look at those maybe before you've watched the rest of this video. If you're okay to continue, let's let's carry on. And um, what we want to do today is to create a second page in our web application that forces login. At the moment, the homepage can be viewed when you're not logged in. We just don't see the user information. So we want to create a secured uh, path within the, the web application that you have to be logged in for. And we're also going to create a simple express-based API that we can connect to from our web application. And we're going to create some public and private endpoints in there as well, again, integrating that with Auth0. Let's get cracking with the web application first. What I want to do is create a second page that uh, enforces authentication. Over here, we can see the main app.js that we wrote last time. The routing is all handled by this index router, which is defined in the routes index.js. And we only have one handler at the moment. If we make a request for the home page, we basically render the index template. So let's duplicate this and we'll create a new uh, URL within the web application, and we'll call this secured. Uh, we're going to use a different template. We'll create a template called secured, and I'm also going to change the title just so that we can see that coming through. So we'll call this one secure page, and they're the only changes I'm going to make to the routing at the moment. Hit save, and then we'll come over. This is our view index.ejs. This is the, the template for the home page. I'm going to hit save as, and we're going to call this secured so that we've got uh, the, the template for the new page that we've just created. I'm also just going to reopen the index page because what I want to do is I no longer want to show this photo on the home page. I only want to show it on the secured page. So I'll just come in here. We're in the index page. I'll just come in here and we'll delete this one. And if we hit save now, and we hit refresh over here, we'll see that the photo has gone. Now, I could type in secured as a URL up here, but let's add some menu items in. So on the index template here, I'm going to copy this line and we'll paste this in a couple of times. Um, I noticed from last time we had a couple of extra quotes in here, so I'll just clean that up. And what we want to do is have a link to the home page and a link to the secure page. So this will go to secured and this is just the root. Now, if I hit save over here and we hit refresh, then over on the right, we can see the uh, the links have come in at the top. Um, clicking home takes you to home page, secure takes you to the secure page, and we can see that the photos come back because that's in the secure template. The navigation, however, hasn't copied through because each of these files has its own navigation. And rather than just copying and pasting these two lines into the secure template, what I'm going to do is just break this out into a partial so that we can include that in future pages anywhere we like. So I'm going to create a new file under views. And in fact, we'll put this in a partials directory. We'll call this nav.ejs. Now we'll just paste that in here. Uh, hit save. We can close that again now. And then rather than outputting the nav in here this way, we can use the ejs syntax to include partials nav. And if we copy this and go into our secure page template, and paste that in here. Save both of these. If I now refresh our secure page, we get the full menu at the top. And when I switch between the two pages, our navigation is now pulled in from our partial. This is much nicer and cleaner to have a look at. Now, the thing is, at the moment, if I log out and I click on the secure page, I'm still getting to the secure page. It's obviously not showing any details because the user object doesn't exist. But we actually want to make this force people to log in. So if we jump back over to the index page here, what we can do is we can provide an extra parameter to this uh, this endpoint handler to uh, require that authentication. And the way we can do that is by pulling in the requires auth object from, and then here we need to require 
the Express Open ID Connect module that we used initially for the authentication. Now we can also require authorization. And in here, we're going to, uh, or still authentication rather, we're requiring auth in order to render this. And here we simply say requires auth as a second parameter. Now, if I hit save and we come over to the SQL page and hit refresh, it's going to redirect us to the login page. So we have to be logged in for this one. If I just go back before I log in, we go on the home page and we re refresh that. That's not a problem. That's still publicly available. So we'll click on secure, takes us over to the login page. And once I'm logged in, again, it'll render the secure page that we had before with the information that is pulled out of my ID token. The next thing I want to do is create the Express API. So what we'll do is we'll take this in small steps first. We'll create an API with a public endpoint. And we'll pull that information into our web application for display, and then we'll continue down the path of adding authentication to the endpoints within the API. For the API, I have a blank directory over here called Express API. And the first thing we need to do is install Express itself. That's going to allow us to use Express as, as the API rendering and handling mechanism. And in the same way as we did for the web application in the first two episodes, rather than running Node manually every time and having to restart it when we make changes to the files, I'm going to install the uh, dev dependency here of Nodemon. And this is going to allow Nodemon to monitor the files. When we make a change, Nodemon will restart Node automatically, and we don't have to remember to restart it every time we want to see a change in our application. In order to use Nodemon, we need to come into the packages.json file, and we need to define a new script. The script we want is the start script, and when we run npm start, we want it to run Nodemon, and app.js is going to be our entry script. So now we can come in here and create app.js. And again, very rudimentary, we're going to define express, express there, and then we're going to define a new app, which is basically the instantiation of Express. And we want to have a, a single uh, endpoint to start with. This is going to be the public endpoint. So app.get. And if we get a request for the public endpoint, we are going to uh, call this function that receives the request and the response. And the way we're going to handle this request is just to do a response.json to return some data. And for now, we're just going to say type is public. Uh, finally, we need to start the app itself. So we need to listen on port. We'll use port 5000 for this one. The other application is running on port 3000. We'll run the API on port 5000. And now if we run npm start down here, we can see it's now um, watching the files and it started the application. And if we open a new tab and we go to localhost port 5000 slash public, we get the response there, the JSON response of type is public. Okay, that's great. Let's now get it to display this information at the bottom of this secure page. So we'll flip back to the web application. And on the secure page itself, uh, before I forget, we'll just output the, um, the data that we're going to get from the response. So for this, it, it's going to be a JSON response. So we're going to use json.stringify. Uh, we'll pass in the data, which we'll collect in a second, and just a little bit of formatting. And I'm also going to wrap the whole thing here in a pre-tag just to make it a bit easier to read uh, on the page. So we'll just save that and then we'll come back into our index page here. So under the, the, the secured endpoint here, we want to do a bit of work to get the, the data in. Um, I also always like to define the default just in case we're not able to receive information from the API. Maybe it's down, maybe our internet connection is broken, could be a number of issues. So uh, by default, we're going to create an empty object of data and then we can pass that data into the template. So if I save this now, we should see that come through the bottom there. Now what we want to do is actually get the data from the API though. So we're going to need to install another module. I like to use Axios for HTTP based requests. If you have another module you prefer to use, that's fine too. So um, I'll just stop the application down here and we'll install Axios. While that's happening, I'll come in and we'll pull Axios in at the top. That's happened, so I'm just going to start npm, uh, start the application again. So we've got our, our Axios handler there. So now what we can do is we can uh, get an API response. 
which is going to be the result of, uh, we're going to do an await on this one. So it's going to be the result of axios.get. And the endpoint that we're calling is HTTP localhost port 5000 public. Uh, now, because we're doing an await here, we're going to have to make sure that the the handler function is uh, an async function. So we'll just put an async in there. And this could fail. So let's also wrap this in a try catch. I'm not going to um, do anything in the catch. We'll just catch it. And if you want to do some error handling of your own, that's something that you can decide how you want to handle within your application. Uh, but in, in case it fails, we're just not going to do anything. If we do get an API response, though, then we can say data is going to be equal to the data returned from the API response, and that should now go into our application. So if I hit save on this and we hit refresh over on this page here, we can see the type public is coming through. The uh, web application is making a call to the API to receive that and then display it in the template. Right, next thing we want to do is to create a private endpoint on the API. So let's switch back over to the API code over here. And again, we're just going to simply copy and paste this. We'll create a private endpoint and we'll return type as private. Now, if I just hit save and we come over here and change this to call private, we can see that response is coming through. And if we come back into our main web application and we call private here instead, and we hit save and refresh this page, we can see private is coming through. So that new endpoint is working well, but of course it's not actually private. I'm able to make this call directly from a web browser and there's no authentication required. So we need to add some authentication into our API now. In order to do this, we need to do a bit of configuration in the Auth0 dashboard. And the reason for this is the Auth0 in previous episodes we set up to understand our web application. We now need it to understand information about the API so that it can then generate access tokens, which we'll come to later in the video. It'll be able to generate those access tokens to allow anybody who's logged into our application to access the API. So if we jump over to the Auth0 dashboard here and head to the API section of our applications, then you'll see that by default, we get a definition here for the Auth0 management API. What we need to do though is create a new API for our purposes. So we're gonna create one called Express API. The identifier is generally a URI. It doesn't need to be, but uh, to keep consistency, we generally use that. It also doesn't have to be the exact URI of your API, but again, just for reference purposes, it makes it easier if that's what you, you put in here. So I'm going to keep with consistent uh, practice and we'll do localhost port 5000 create that one. Now on this page here, we get go straight into the, the quick starts again. I'm going to click on Node.js and what, what you get here is basically a, a complete app.js that you could just copy and paste and get going straight away. Obviously, we've got some of these endpoints already in there and some of this configuration. So I'm, I'm only going to copy out the bits that we need in order to configure our existing API to integrate with Auth0. So the first thing we need to do is to install a couple of extra modules. So I'll just put those in there and we'll stop the application. So npm install, we want to add express JWT and JWKS RSA. Yes. Essentially what express JWT is providing us is a standards compliant way of receiving a JSON web token in the bearer token, the authentication headers of the request that comes in to the API. This is not specific to Auth0. Any OpenID compliant identity provider is going to um, issue JSON web tokens that can be interpreted and handled using the Express JWT library. The JWKS RSA library is allowing us, because we're using RSA 256 as a signing algorithm for the, the JSON web tokens, that's a public private key based uh, signing. And in order to get the public key from the issuing authentication server, the JWKS RSA library allows us to do that really easily. And the way we do that, if we switch back over here and look at this code, is to define this JWT check. We'll copy that line as well, and then we'll go through that in here. So let's paste this in. So we're defining this JWT check, which is a way of checking the JSON web token. And we're basically saying that the secret is defined by using this JWKS URI, again, part of this JWKS uh, RSA library, and saying this endpoint here will give you the public key from the identity provider so that you can use that to verify that the JSON web token hasn't been tampered or modified in transit. It's also defining here that the token is only valid if the audience is localhost port 5000. This part here aligns with the, the configuration we put into Auth0. And then we also want to make sure that our Auth0 tenant is the issuer. 
unless the token was generated by this issuer here, we're not going to accept it. And finally, we're saying we will only accept tokens that are signed using RS-256 hashing algorithms. This line 18 here basically tells the whole application to say, you need to make sure that JWT check passes in order to render any pages. So let's hit save and we'll come back over here to the private page and we'll hit refresh. Need to restart NPM. We'll hit refresh and we can see that we're getting a no authorization token was found and that's great. The only downside is that if we go back to our public page and hit refresh, we're getting the same thing there. And the reason for that is this line 18 where we say the whole application needs to use JWT check before proceeding. We only want this one endpoint here to have a check on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and we're going to pass that through as the second parameter. So this is something that needs to pass for this endpoint to be able to be rendered. And then we can get rid of that from here because we want the public endpoint to still be publicly accessible. If I hit save now and we refresh this page over here, we can see the public is still working. And if we go back to the private and hit refresh, it's still expecting a token. So we've now managed to secure the endpoint. If we come back over here and refresh this page, we'll see that we're not getting any data through because the application is making a request for the private endpoint still, but it's not providing that authentication information for the API to be able to be happy that it's able to return the information that's being requested. So let's jump back over to the web application and see what we can fix over here in order to get that header information through. We're making the request here to the private endpoint. And in order to pass extra information through, we provide a second uh, parameter, which is an object of information. And in here, we want to define some headers. And the header we want to define is the authorization header. And this is usually in the form of bearer and then whatever the, the token is that came through. We need to pull this information out when we log in. So we're going to have to get a bit more information during the login process in order to get access to this access token. Once we have that, we'll be able to use uh, another method of the uh, request uh, OIDC. So in the previous episodes, we called request OIDC and used the is authenticated. We also pulled out the user. There's another part of the request.oidc called the access token. And this here, we can actually pull extra information out of. So the information we're going to want from the access token is the token type and the access token itself. So the token type in most cases is going to be bearer. So that'll be replaced in here. And then the actual token itself goes next. So presuming we can get these two bits of information out, we'll now be able to pass this into the authorization header. And that should solve this part of the problem. The next thing we need to do though is provide a mechanism for the web application to uh, request the access token from Auth0 during the login process. So I'm just going to save this and we're going to jump back into our main app. And this is where we've got the main configuration for connecting to Auth0. We put a whole lot of these things into our environment variables in, in one of the previous episodes. We need to add a bit more information in so Auth0 is able to request that access token. By default, it'll just get a an ID token and a different kind of access token that just gives you a bit more information about the user. We want an access token that we can use with a third party API. So one of the things we're going to need to pass in, as well as the client ID, as you can see here on line 11, is we need to pass in the client secret. And we're going to define this again as a, an environment variable. And the other bit of information we need, I'll just paste in here and we can go through, we need to define some extra authorization parameters. The first thing we want to do is define that we're using a response type code. And this is basically confirming the authorization flow type that we're using. It's called the code grant type. We want to also specify that we need uh, an access token that can be used for a specific audience. And in this case, the audience that we want our web application on port 3000 to be able to talk to is the API on port 5000. And finally, we're going to define some scope information. So we know that we want to start an OpenID Connect based authentication process that's going to follow the OpenID standards. We want to get profile information back and if it's available, also the email address. So we'll save this. We do need to find the client secret. So we'll jump into the end file over here. I'll add it just under the client ID. And we'll jump back into the Auth0 dashboard real quick and go over to the settings tab. In fact, no, we need to go to the applications because we're getting client secret for the Express app configuration. So we'll jump in here. And under the settings tab, we've got our client ID here, which is in the environment file already. And now we'll just copy this client secret and we'll paste that in here and hit save. 
Now, even though I said before we're running Nodemon, which means that when most file changes are detected, it'll restart the web application for us, the .end file is not one that's normally checked by Nodemon. So I'm just gonna come down here and manually restart NPM. We can see that we're happily running on port 3000 again. And if I come over onto the right-hand side here and refresh, we see that it's starting to spin out. We're not actually getting any information. The reason for this is that we don't actually have the access token yet. We need to log out and log back in first in order for uh, the new configuration that we've defined in our application to send a message to Auth0 and get that access token. One other thing we need to do first though is to tell Auth0 to allow our application to talk to the API. So to do that, we come down into the API section here again and edit the settings for the Express API configuration we, we configured just earlier. And we need to go over to the machine to machine applications. And in here, we'll see a list of all the applications under the applications tab. We can see that the Express app that we've been working with is not authorized to generate access tokens for this API. So we'll just tick that so that now when we log into the Express app again, it's gonna generate that access token. We'll switch back over here and we'll click on login. And this time when we log in, we're gonna get this extra authorization request. It's basically saying, do you allow the Express app to receive uh, access tokens and send information for the Express API? Uh, we want the profile information. And yes, in, in this case we do. So now we're logged in again, and if we go over to the secure page, we can see that the request to the private endpoint, whereas before it was failing and just showing us the default empty object, is now getting that information back from the API with the type private. So that's it in a nutshell. We've managed to take an Express app that already had a little bit of authentication inside it. We secured one of the web pages so you had to be logged in to even render it. And we've created a simple API that has both public and private endpoints where the private ones need an access token in order to authenticate, which is provided by Auth0 or any OpenID compliant provider to the application during the login process. I hope this has been helpful. I'd love to get your questions down in the comments below. If you're trying anything like this, uh, let us know what you're working on. I'd love to find out more. If you have found it useful, please click that like button. It does help other people find out about the video too. And we're always releasing new content on the Auth0 channel. So hit that subscribe button. Bell notification will give you earlier notifications of when new content comes out. And until next time, happy coding.